We're going to talk about rigid conduit today, but to talk about rigid conduit is more than just the conduit. It's more than just the bending. It's the fittings that we might be using in association with conduit that's rigid and threaded. Some of the boxes we deal with are what we call an FS or an FSD. That's a fitting type box. It has a threaded hub embedded with the box. And we're going to thread conduit into that. Multiple different versions of that. This is a one that goes in and out. That way we can continue on the conduit. We got some that come that we can go in and out the same side. FS boxes come in different arrangements. You got to buy the right ones. Then we have these fittings, which we call condolettes. Now this is an LB, commonly used to make a quick turn on threaded conduit. Then we have a C condolette. This goes straight through. What this does is allow us to go in and go through, and we're only allowed 360 degrees between one enclosure and the next. Sometimes with rigid conduit, we're in confined areas, and we will have a lot of bends in a short distance. So we put this in the, in the way to give us a pull point to alleviate from this point to this point, you know, right side, we've got 360 degrees or less. And from this point on, we got another 360 degrees possible. This is a, an L shape. The way these are, LLs and LRs, the, the ideal is this opening here is faced to the right if you hold it like a pistol. This is an LR. This would be an LL, right? Still an L shape, but the opening's on the left-hand side. Then we have a T condolet. T gives us a, a three-way come in, drop down. Uh, in industrial settings, this is a go-to source to make joints and continue on. Then the lighter weight stuff, we call them bell boxes. Sometimes these bell boxes are used with rigid conduit, but these can be used for EMT or anything else. Uh, but these have threaded hubs as well. A little bit different, lightweight. We use those sometimes on rigid conduit to keep the environmental requirements. When we're dealing with rigid conduit, there's some specialty tools that uh, it's kind of specific to rigid conduit. One, this is a, a, a half round file. Now it's actually, uh, ironically, the actual name of this is called a bastard file. It truly is. And this, this is a half round, it's rounded. And we put this inside the conduit and take the inside burrs out with a half round file. For the smaller conduits or for the cheaper version, this is usually all, always around a job site. This is a piece of all thread. Now you can take this piece of all thread, same ideal. Just stick this in here and take the inside burrs right off, same way you would with this half round. We're gonna get the inside burrs out. Anytime we cut and thread conduit or anytime we put conduit together, we'll make sure there's no inside burrs in that conduit. Now, obviously you're gonna need a couple of pair of channel locks. Which brands? I've got a couple different brands here, it doesn't matter, but you're gonna need at least two of these in multiple sizes, depending on the size of conduit that you're dealing with. You get into some bigger conduit, you're gonna need some bigger tools. For this demonstration, we're gonna be using smaller conduit and smaller tools is all we need. Another tool that's required anytime we're dealing with rigid conduit is some type of threading tool. This is our typical tool we're gonna to see for the smaller conduits. This is a power pony and an oil bucket and a tripod. These three uh, components have to go together. We have to have an oil bucket. The power pony is nice because it's powered electrically. Some of the bigger benders or the bigger uh, conduits that we bend, we'll actually use a, a nicer threader, a bigger threader that's kind of self-maintained. One person can operate, but this, you actually have to have two people to operate this. One person will be actually using the power tool and mounting that on there. The other person would actually be oiling it the whole time that this thread is being cut. If that oil is not applied while the thread is being cut, this thing will heat up, seize up, and could actually turn the whole operation upside down and hurt somebody. This is a tool that we use constantly. 